Hi friends, welcome to Dr. Ram's Medical Coding Academy. Here we are going to talk about this medical terminologies and today's session is about the directional terms and the anatomical position. With medical terms, we also have directional terms. So what are these directions going to point? You should understand a student of anatomy needs to know where an organ or a part is being located and what are the structures that are above this organ or below this organ and medial to this organ and lateral to this organ. We need to know exactly where this organ is being placed and what is this organ's reference with respect to the neighboring organs. For that, we need to know the anatomical terms or the directional terms. Come, let's talk about these and before that, let me explain the anatomical position. What is this position? This is a standard reference position in which the patient stands erect with his arms lying by the side and the face looking forward with the palms of the hand facing forward. This is a standard position which is used for all these anatomical references. Now what is the need to have these positions or this position specifically? Imagine a surgeon is going to make an incision. He is going to make an incision on the forearm and you need to is it on the medial side or on the lateral side in the sense is it on the inner side or on the outer side to know all these we have specific terms which indicate where exactly the surgery has been done for example if the surgeon is going to do a procedure on the outer aspect then we understand something is done towards a radius bone whereas if he's going to do a procedure on the medial side then it is going to be on the ulnar side of the forearm. This is the anatomical position and that's why it is important to avoid confusion and this will also help us to understand the reference of this particular organ with respect to the neighboring structures. Let's go to the first directional term which is the right and the left. Human being we see it as a bilateral symmetry in the sense like the body can be divided into two equal halves. So the region that lies on the right side we say as a right side and that on the left as a left side. In coding we also have modifiers to determine what exactly is the laterality in which the service has been done. We say as bilateral. When I say as bilateral, bi meaning two and lateral meaning sides. So the procedure is being done on both the sides, the right and the left. In such case, we used to add a modifier RT to the right side and LT to the left side. Next comes the anterior and posterior. Anterior literally means front, whereas posterior means back. Take for instance my hand. I'm just showing you the anterior aspect of my palm. So this region is called as the front surface or the palmar surface or in otherwise we call it as the ventral surface. If I am going to turn my hand, this we call it as the back surface or the posterior surface or the dorsal surface. Specifically while talking about hand, we can say this as also as a palmar aspect of the hand and the dorsal aspect of the hand or instead we can simply say as the dorsum of the hand. Hope you understand this front and back. Next we have this medial and lateral. What is medial? Take for instance there are two bones on the forearm. We have the radius and the ulna. The bone that lies on the outer aspect we say as a radius and the bone that lies on the inner aspect we say as a medial. Ulna side is also called as a medial side and the radial side is the outer side or the lateral side. When I say is medial, it is towards the body and lateral, it is away from my body. I hope you understand this. Say for instance, with the anatomical position, the thumb is a lateral to the body, whereas a small finger is medial towards the body. Next term is superior and inferior. Superior, you all might know, if you are working in your office, the person who is above you is your superior and the one who is below you in terms of rank or designation is inferior. Same way, if an organ is going to lie on top of this organ or above this organ, we call it as superior and the organs that lie beneath this organ, we call it as inferior. Take for instance, I can very well tell you, heart is superior to my stomach. This shows that heart is lying above the stomach where there is 
kidney and on top of that kidney there is a gland you all know what is that gland this gland can be termed with the directional term as superior so i'm going to call this gland as suprarenal gland renal refers to kidney in latin in greek we call kidney as nephro so this gland is located above the kidney in the superior position so i call this gland as the adrenal gland which is an important endocrine organ it is also called as a suprarenal gland superficial and deep take for instance the layers of skin we have epidermis dermis and hypodermis epidermis is superficial dermis is deep so with respect whether it is superficial or deep we also have the same terms of superficial and deep next we have like with laterality we also have something called as ipsilateral and contralateral lateral meaning side ipsi meaning on the same side contra meaning on the opposite side let me give an example an ipsilateral leg which means imagine a patient is presenting to the clinician where he has paralysis of the right upper extremity and if this patient is also going to have paralysis on the right lower extremity then we can say as paralysis of the right upper extremity and ipsilateral lower extremity which means here paralysis is taking place on the right upper extremity and the right lower extremity in case this patient is gonna suffer from paralysis on the entire right side we also call this as hemiplegia hemi meaning half and plegia meaning paralysis so one half of the body is being paralyzed instead if i gonna say the patient is presenting with paralysis on the right upper extremity and contralateral extremity in this case the paralysis is going to be on the right upper and then on the left to lower leg here the word contra tells you that the person is getting the disease on the opposite side if the patient is lying down we see that as a decubitus position or the lying down position and again with reference whether the patient is looking with face upwards or downwards we can coin the term similarly if the patient is lying down with his face downwards we call that as prone position and if the patient is lying down with face up we call it as supine position prone is this position and supine is this position next is cranial and caudal cranium refers to the head region the cranial bones the bones of the skull and caudal refers to the tail region so when we say like it is cranial that means it is towards the head region and when we say as in the caudal aspect we are trying to say it is towards the tail portion now when i think of this caudal i also think of one particular condition called as cauda equina syndrome do any of you know what this cauda equina syndrome okay i'll explain this cauda equina which means cauda as tail and equina means horse so cauda equina literally means horse tail now what is the syndrome the patient is developing signs and symptoms because of this compression of the spinal nerves that arise from the terminal regions of the spinal cord as a treatment the surgeon would be providing a lumbar epidural steroid injection to treat this particular cauda equina syndrome as the patient is going to suffer from radiculitis or severe pain next we'll move on to the body planes here we are going to talk about three different planes i told you all we are having bilateral symmetry same way if the patient is going to be studied in this plane where the person is going to be divided into equal right and left halves we call that as sagittal plane in fact the word sagittus literally means an arrow imagine the arrow is going to divide the body into equal right and left equal halves next is a transverse plane where we are going to study the body in the upper and the lower halves next is a coronal plane where we are going to see the frontal and the back sections can you see this picture and let me know that this structure which is here has been shown is our brain now tell me in the comment section if i am going to talk about the neck region 
where exactly is a neck placed you need to fill this and you'll have to post in the comment section so that i will also personally respond to your answers what is the position of neck with respect to the structure that is shown here which is a brain i hope this session would have been immensely useful to you as part of this medical terminology training i'll see you in the next video and take care till then you can contact us at 805-60-855-96-99-62-79-1072